Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So, I haven't filmed in a while and that's because I've been in FMTV. Uh, wasn't planning on filming this video in uniform, but uh, you see, <laughs> uh, I rolled my sleeves like super tight and my roommate's not home, so like I'm stuck in my sleeves unless I want to go like bang on some random person's door and be like, hey, help me take my ball. So uh, as cringy as that is, I will be filming this in uniform. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my FMTV East Coast experience and give you guys a couple pointers or something, anything, any wealth of knowledge you take from this video, great. Love that for you. Um, so with that being said, cue the intro, coronavirus! And uh, let's talk about FMTV East Coast. So, I got a fancy little index card with like some things to mention on here. Uh, this is mostly going to be like me talking at you, but in the end of this video, I haven't decided if I'm going to do like a split screen scenario or how I'm gonna go about it, but I have a little video of like some of the snippets of my FMTV experience that I could actually record and or take pictures of. So I will play that for y'all. I went East Coast. There's East Coast and there's West Coast. Okay, so FMTV is field med training for corpsmen so they can go with the Marine Corps so we can wear this fancy outfit and this beautiful shield right here, um, blood, sweat, tears, and miles went into getting this. So I'm very proud of it. Um, milestone for me. So yeah, it's an opportunity for Navy Sailor Corpsmen to roll with the Marine Corps. Um, and there's this beautiful thing called Nuff Nuff Pin, which I do not have yet because I've been, uh, a, I've, literally got out of FMTV like two weeks ago, so give me some time. But you all are quarantined right now, so what better thing to do than watch one of my videos? And um, perfect segue into me telling you to subscribe to my channel if you're not, because hello. <sighs> the first piece of advice I want to give anybody who's going to field med, rather it's East Coast or West Coast, is like, cardio. You better know how to run. <laughs> you better know how to run and you better know how to run far because uh, you're going to be doing a lot of running. Uh, specifically for East Coast, uh, you literally ran anywhere you went. If you were going down the hallway to get water or if you were like leaving the classroom to use the bathroom, like you were moving with speed, volume, and intensity. You were sprinting everywhere. <laughs> uh, so Make sure you can run, make sure your cardio is up. Um, make sure you can run with weight, because that was a shocker for me to get to field med. And then like literally the first week, our instructors were like, okay, we're going on an ammo can run. And if you don't know what an ammo can is, it's about yay big and it's full of sand and it's like 35 pounds. And you're like holding that bitch on your shoulder and like running with it, not like a, stay at home mom run, but like a fucking we're going somewhere, let's go kind of run. So that was definitely a shocker. Uh, you run in a flak and Kevlar and shit, like you should just be used to carrying extra weight on your body and doing cardio because you're going to be doing a lot of it. Your PFT, you're going to have to run three miles and you're going to have to do it depending on your age within a certain time frame. Run, 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 run. Just don't be fat. Like, if you're going into field med, expect to, if you are fat, you're not going to be fat when you leave, fat or you're not going to graduate. Um, and if you're that overachiever kind of person, just go into it prepared. It's very physically demanding, so don't go into it thinking like, I can go into this mediocre and skate and get through because that's not how that works. Um, you're in a whole different fucking whole different ball game than the Navy, okay? So just getting bare minimum on your PRT is not how this works. 
Um, along with that, like learning how to self aid and stretch and foam roll, like you don't want to go to medical. There's a certain amount of hours that you can miss before you get dropped from a PTP class. So really learning how to foam roll, stretch, your body is going to be going through it. Your body is going to be super sore and everybody's sore and everybody feels like they're breaking. You're not alone, uh, but you are going to be hurting. Like parts of your body that you didn't even know existed are going to hurt. Uh, so just knowing how to take Tylenol, <laughs> knowing how to stretch, um, making sure that you're drinking so much water. I think I should have invested in stock for fucking Pedialyte during FMTV because I lived off of it. Um, so knowing how to self-aid specifically in like the sports medicine aspect. There's a lot of feet injuries, blisters. Um, in the little video that I have at the end, <laughs> I have some nasty videos and pictures of my feet, some pretty gnarly bruises. Um, that just randomly pop up out of nowhere. You just wake up one morning and you just have a huge bruise down your leg and you're like, hmm, don't know where that came from, but I'm glad she's here to uh, make me hurt more than I already was. Uh, bring a yoga mat and foam roller, uh, especially East Coast, those barracks are like from the Korean War and that shit's gnarly and not in a good way. Um, so don't be like stretching and getting all over that floor, especially with fucking the world as it is right now, don't touch anything you don't need to. <laughs> Learning how to pack a ruck before you go would, honestly, if I would have known how to pack a ruck before I got there, my life would have been so much easier because they don't teach you how to do it. They just kind of like give you your shit and they're like, mm, whatever feels comfortable, go, go off sis. Uh, but there is a strategic way to go about packing a ruck so the weight sits in specific areas where you're comfortable you know how to adjust and use the straps properly because you can put straps out here you can put straps in here um your back plate is super fucking important like check your gear when you get it, it like when you get it check it because if you end up with like, like a broken strap or a broken fucking back plate or one of your fucking clips doesn't work you're probably going to fail your hikes because your pack is the most essential thing aside from not being a fat fuck that gets you through your hikes. The way you pack it, how well your pack is, like the integrity of your pack period, and then just like not being fat and hydrating, 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 hydrating. Um, I went through field med obviously January to March, so it was absolutely freezing. Cold, 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 cold. Um, if you're not acclimated to East Coast weather and you're going East Coast, I would suggest that you just get used to freezing every single day of your life, because you're going to. Hand warmers are your best friend. Just don't put your hands in your pockets. So like pull one of these or like one of these or like stick in your hands, like in your buttons kind of thing. Uh, you find ways around it. However, hand warmers, toe warmers, um, we were getting creative. <laughs> you put like a hand warmer in your bra, you put one like in the lining of your belt, uh, anything you can do to stay warm because it gets insanely cold. Um, you are going to make some of the best friends you've ever had in field med, honestly, and some not so amazing people. <laughs> But the people that you do meet, that you do click with, they're going to be like family to you because you're going through a very stressful time. And uh, yeah, you'll meet some cool people. So learning how to pack her up, learning how to self-aid as far as sports medicine goes, cardio, weighted cardio. Um, don't underestimate these tests. So you're gonna be taking tests and you can think that you are the hottest thing since sliced bread and you are a foreman who knows everything and you know your shit. Which, good on you, if you do, I'm not doubting anybody's ability. However, don't go into it thinking like, I need to stress about the physical aspect of it and not the like fucking curriculum behind it because there are some things that you're going to learn that you did not know and maybe you learn things that you already knew. However, don't go in there underestimating the test because 
a lot of people did that and a lot of people ended up dropping the course because they didn't take it as serious as they should have. At the end of the day, it's still a test. It is still a schoolhouse. You are still there to learn. Um, the written exams are not something to be taken lightly. So make sure you're studying. If you're going East Coast, there is absolutely nothing for you in Jacksonville, North Carolina that you need to be wasting your weekends and your money and your fucking time and your breath to fail out of field time. Like, there's not a goddamn thing in Jacksonville, North Carolina that you should be doing that is worth you failing out of field time. Just gonna say that now. Um, so study on the weekends, don't go out partying, <laughs> don't get in fights. <laughs> um, another thing, which is also blue side culture, but like a huge green side culture thing is the hurry up and wait concept. That's just a military thing in general, but like it gets amplified by like 120 fucking million when you go green side. You will sprint and do everything with speed, volume, and intensity, and then you will wait hours until you move on to the next evolution. If you don't like the hurry up and wait concept, I would reevaluate your decision to go to field map. And if it's not your choice and you're being voluntold via the Navy, um, suck it up. That's it's gonna happen a lot. Uh, so this next one's kind of funny, and I didn't want to put this in here, but my roommate was like, hey dude, like, you should probably mention something about this because I didn't know what I was doing, so... Uh, know how to eat an MRE. <laughs> like, know how to open it properly, know how to warm your food up properly because you get one MRE for that meal and if you fuck it up, then you're eating it cold. So make sure if you don't know what you're doing, you ask. And if you don't want to ask and you're embarrassed, just like watch somebody and learn from their mistakes. Cause the MREs are not, well, there's some, there's some really good ones, but there are also some really, really bad ones and none of them taste good cold. So I already mentioned the hand warmers thing cause it gets very, very cold. If you're going during the summer, it gets so fucking hot here. Whew! It is not just hot. Like Texas, Texas was hot when it was like 114 degrees and we were fucking marching around doing our thing. No. It's like humidity 120,000%. Like you walk outside and instantly you're sweating. Like if you go to field med during the summer, there's so many heat cases. Don't be one of them. Take all of the proper precautions. Don't ever put, put even if you go in the winter, do not ever, ever, ever put warming layers on for a rock. Don't do it. It's stupid. You're gonna be cold for the first three minutes and then you're instantly gonna start sweating. <laughs> Instantaneously. And you are going to fucking huff and puff and hate your life for how many miles you go for. And then you're gonna finish it and be like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, I fucking did that. Bye. F my boots. <laughs> These good bad boys with the, oh God, with the EGA on them. Um, buy them prior to coming to field med and break them in. Uh, don't like, don't get caught fucking wearing them in your fucking type threes or some shit cause that's just stupid. But like on your off time, buy a pair of FMF boots, break them in, get them comfortable, buy insoles because one of the hardest things is transitioning into these boots and get used to running in these boots because for some reason we get issued PT here, but you wanna know how many times we wore it? Once, one time to run our PFT and that was it. Every other PT session that we did, which was every single day, sometimes three, four times a day, you're getting your ass beat, you are never in PT gear. You are always working out boots and boots. Always. So get used to running in these boots. Break a pair of boots in before you come because if you don't, Lord help you, your feet are going to be killing you. Um, and your shin splints are gonna be gnarly. So you might as well get them early on and learn how to deal with the pain. Then, uh, you know, just my advice there. Be prepared for the gas chamber. You guys think that you went through the gas chamber in Navy boot camp? You didn't. Um, the CS gas, I don't know what the Marine Corps would be putting in there, but that shit hit different, and you are going to feel like you're dying. It sucks, it's not fun. 
Um, make sure you're not wearing fucking contacts. Don't be stupid. And don't be a buddy fucker when you're in there. Like when they say pop your fucking seal, pop your seal, do what you need to do so you're not holding it longer than you should have. We were in there for like, I'm not even shitting you when I say almost five minutes because we had some people freak out. And don't try to run out of the gas chamber either. We had people try to do that and then we were just in there longer. Just fucking pop your seal, suffer in silence, shut your eyes, act like you're not there, find your happy place, get it over with, and then it's done. So practice hikes. You should do practice hikes. And I know that I say this and you're probably watching this you're like, oh yeah, practice hike. I'm talking like, get a backpack, throw some weight in that bitch and jog. <laughs> jog. I'm not talking like, I'm going to go on a leisure hike. I'm going to take some pictures. I'm going to enjoy my time. No, you're going to run and you're going to die um, because you have to keep a three, 3.5, four mile an hour pace the whole time. Um, in the East Coast, we do two miles, four miles, six miles, and eight miles. Uh, and all of it's relatively flat ground. Um, you still want to make sure that you have like stronger ankles, so I would do some like off-roading and shit, <laughs> but FNTV East is pretty easy. I did it. You can do it. Uh, but definitely practice for hikes and practice going at a very fast pace because you're, the, our four mile hike specifically was the worst one for me because we were, my platoon was in the back and we had the worst slinky effect ever. And for three and a half miles of the four, I'm not even shitting you guys when I say I was running, like sprinting the whole three and a half miles. And then like that last half mile, I was just like, whew, I was so dead. And we finally like the, we figured out our slinky issues. We got it all good to go. And it was fine for the last half mile. But, but like I said, if you're used to it, you'll be fine. Get used to super, super long days with a huge lack of sleep. Like, you aren't going to sleep much in field med at all. So get used to waking up every single day. And I'm not just saying like waking up at four, I'm talking like if you're a female especially, waking up, being around and fucking getting ready to get to where you need to go by four o'clock in the morning. And then your day usually will go until schoolhouse time varies. Um, but as far as you moving around and doing what you need to do, you're you're gonna be up until 10 at least. Don't bring a lot of personal shit with you. If you're PCSing and you're coming from like a command, my best piece of advice is either get a storage unit or like find friends that are also going to that command and keep your stuff at their house because you have a wall locker and then you have your rack. Um, and if you're going up a map, I'm assuming you're prior Navy and you know the sizing of those. So don't bring a lot of personal shit because not only are you gonna have all of the shit that you brought with you, you're also going to have all of the shit oh, that you get roommate. issues. My roommate came home. Say hello. What's up, what's up? I was just talking about how like, don't bring a lot of shit with you because on top of all the shit you bring, oh, <laughs> on top of all the shit you bring, you're gonna get issued like so much shit. Uh, and the fucking wall lockers and the racks are small as fuck. So don't bring anything that's not necessary. As far as like Navy shit you need to bring, you need to bring one pair of type threes and your dress uniform that you check obviously in. Obviously undershirts for that. Yeah, and obviously undershirts. Uh, you don't, oh, and you need Navy PT gear because you're gonna do like a weigh-in and a PRT like your first day. So there's that. The closet that they give us is smaller than the one that Harry Potter lives on from the stairs. Facts, that is factual information. So, you are going to be a student. You're going to be in student status. You need to e address everybody by their rank. Even if it's some fucking Lance Corporal at the range who is the same, oh yeah, glow belt. You wear those way too much. But addressing people that by their rank, even if it's a fucking Lance Corporal who's giving you bullshit at the range, who's been in the Marine Corps for like a year and a half and you've been in for four years and she's screaming in your face like telling you what to do. Right there. That was the fucking position to assume. Yeah. Um, so, know when to talk and when not to talk. Always address everybody by their rank. Don't do that shit. <laughs> uh, like, but morning, Lance Corporal, how's it going, bro? Yeah, no, that's not gonna fly, like, whatsoever. 
Uh, but just like know your place, know that you're a student again, and don't fuck around. And don't call Gunnery Sergeant Gunny. You're not friends. Yeah, you're not fucking. You don't rate. We we have shields and we don't even rate. So like if you walk in there being like, oh hey Gunny or hey Master Guns, what's up? It's like no. Do not forget your stupid cat card in another uniform or something. Always bring it with you, no matter what. You should already do that anyways. But yeah. Yeah, your cat card should always, always, always be on you. you um, with your dog cat tags card. also. Like I know that when I got here, I didn't know where the fuck my dog tags were, and there. <coughs> tags. Same shit. Per the military, we're supposed to call them ID tags because you're not dogs. Shut up. Um, yes. But I am your bitch. We are the military bitch. But yeah, so your ID, ID card, ID tags, ID card, you know, they always got to go with you everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then probably the last piece of advice I have for you guys is know how to clean an M4 before you get there. Or you are going to be sitting, what, the first time we went to the range, how long were we there? 10 hours. hours. Yeah, 10 hours straight, just cleaning the same piece of the rifle that you cleaned before. Like all those armory jokes that like you hear or you see on Instagram, like on fucking Chuck Corvettes and shit, where they're like, oh my God, I turned this up like four times and it's still right. dirty, but it's not. Like that shit's true. When you go to the grave, the rifle's still not clean. Yeah, seriously. Um, so just, if you don't already kind of get a feel for how to clean a rifle and the less CLP you use, the better, just saying, like one little drop will do it because it just breaks down the carbon and you'll just be sitting there like cleaning your rifle way longer than you should because it's just gonna break it down. So if you can get away with not using any CLP at all, don't because uh, then you're just gonna like wipe it clean and then it's not your problem because it's not your rifle. Just saying. Can you talk about bones? Oh, no. <laughs> you are in a Marine Corps uniform now. Luscious walks. That Navy, like, I'm gonna have a fucked up bun shit is not a thing. Like, even this, in PT gear. Yeah, even Fine. in PT gear, you need to have your shit in check. Like, if there's flyaways, wrong. If your bun is, like, fucking huge, wrong. If your bun is, like, non existent and it's just kind of like a fucking clusterfuck on the back of your head, wrong like I need cheap. yeah your shit you're going to have a receding hairline because of how tight you're going to pull your shit because it has to look good the goal for you is to look better than the female marines around you yes you're gonna paint the picture of the elite hormone rate but that's all i really have to talk about have fun and feel fun it is fun, you'll miss it. Like, you'll hate your life when you're there, but like, once you get out, you, we talk about it all the time. We're like, damn, I kind of miss field man. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah. No, but have fun. If you're going soon, good luck. And with that being said, I'm gonna end this video right here. So here is going to be where I insert my other little video of everything that I didn't feel fun. Things that I actually recorded and or took pictures of for your entertainment. Birthday, bitch! <laughs> 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 
How do you think I found out? Thank you. <laughs>